So we have been spending a really long time, like, what, four weeks, roughly, talking about biotic and abiotic factors, scavengers, decomposers, um, different herbivores, different carnivores, different omnivores. And the reason why we have learned all of those things, Fabiana, is so when I start using all of those fancy words, but I'm getting a little bit more specific about what type of carnivore or what type of herbivore or what type of abiotic factor in a specific place, we can start recognizing what biome in particular that I'm talking about because that's what we're going to start studying. And you can see here we're going to start off with aquatic biomes, but then that leads me to question, um, do we need to put this on the board? And I think the answer to this is yes. And that is, what in the world does this word biome mean? It's one of our vocabulary words this week. So we're going to jot that down in the anchor chart. And we're going to jot that down in our notebooks and talk a little bit about that as well. So we've written the word biome down. I hope at this point I see a few people still jotting things down. A biome is one of Earth's ecosystems. It's got its own type of climate, soil. So you have sun, soil, temperature, and water. It's, it has its own unique abiotic factors. And it has its own unique biotic factors. So when I start talking about cactus and scorpions you should not be thinking oh that lives in the deciduous forest right so those are very specific biotic factors now i start talking about very specific abiotic factors climate it's hot very little water very little rain the soil is terrible because it's mostly sandy now we're talking the desert right so you can see how the desert has very specific climate and soil and plants and animals. And that's going to be for every ecosystem. Mr. Bullen, do you mean I need to remember all of that? Yeah, that's a lot to remember, isn't it? It is. Now, does Max need to remember, like, every single animal in a tropical rainforest? Um, no, that would be ridiculous to ask somebody to do. Every plant, no. But you do need to be, like, the main things of each one. And I don't think that that's asking too much. So as I'm starting to look here, I'm already back at another new word. And I haven't even got off the first page yet. And that second word is, if I know what a biome is, I need to know what aquatic is. Now, we've talked about this because of morning work before, correct? I feel like we have. What does the word aquatic have to do with, Jesse? Having to do with water. We're going to jot that down on our anchor chart as well. So we've taken the time to write down, again, this is our second definition. It's weird. It feels like I'm working from the bottom of my vocabulary sheet up. I did not do that on purpose because it definitely stops after this. Aquatic means having to do with water. So, Glenn, everything that we look at today is going to be water biomes. We won't be talking about the desert, the deciduous forest, the tundra, the taiga, the savanna. We're looking at things that have to do with water. Makes sense? Aquatic biomes. I know you're thinking, holy cow, you just spent all this time. There's like not even a definition on this page. You will see the word aquatic on the quizzes and tests. You will see the word biomes on there, and you will see them put together as aquatic biomes. We will come back and watch that. If you're at home, please be sure to watch this. It's very important. Again, we just defined this, right? We just wrote this down. It's on the anchor chart. You wrote it down. Hopefully, if you're at home, you have a time to look at that. Here's just a list of some of the aquatic biomes. Lakes and ponds, rivers and streams, estuaries, not a new word for us, which is going to be really cool. We can go through that a little faster than normal. Coral reefs, and then the open ocean or the marine biomes, which we will dig into here in just a minute. Aquatic biomes. That is not the entire list of aquatic biomes. That's just some of them. We are going to start off with the marine biome. The marine biome is the largest biome. It is the ocean. How do I know that's the largest biome? It covers, what, roughly 75% of the Earth, the oceans do, roughly. Um, obviously, it has to be the largest of all the biomes. It includes any region of the Earth's surface that is covered with salt water, which brings me to another definition that we've already covered, Miriam, and that is, what is salt water? Really easy definition, water that has salt in it. So we're going to jot those two things down. We're going to talk about marine biome on our anchor chart, and we're going to put the word salt water on there as well. Here we go. Ocean, or the marine biome. Marine biomes have the most 
biodiversity. I don't know if you can see this word here. Biodiversity means different types of living things. You see that word bio? It means life. Diversity means many of, so the many different types of life. It has the most different types of plants and animals than any other biome, even the rainforest, which is really hard to believe when we start studying the rainforest. The biggest of the marine biomes is the ocean. This includes all five major oceans. You do not have to jot all this down. Pacific, Indian, Southern Atlantic, and Arctic. The ocean biomes are divided into different regions from shallow to deep. You don't have to write that down, Brandon. A wide variety of animals live in the ocean biome from mammals like dolphins and whales and invertebrates like jellyfish. Now, you do need to be able to recognize some of the animals that live in the ocean. All of them, no, because it's the largest and most biodiverse. So again, I'm not going to write a whole lot about this down other than this very top part. It is the most biodiverse. It has the most biodiversity, the most types of living things inside of it. We kind of already said some of this stuff, Brandon, that the marine biome is the biggest biome because it covers 70% of the earth. Again, here's that same thing, five major oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and Southern, as well as many other smaller gulfs and bays. Now, again, I'm not making you memorize any of this, although it would be very nice, like later on down the road, you're going to have to know all the different oceans. Marine regions are very salty. About one cup of salt per gallon of water in the ocean. So if you don't know how salty it is, go home, get like a gallon of milk when it's empty, pour a cup of salt in there, then fill it up with water. And that's approximately, some places are more, some places are less, but approximately. Plants, this I am going to write down. Over one million species of plants and animals have been discovered in the oceans. Scientists say there may be as many as nine million we haven't even found and discovered yet. One reason why is because the ocean is so vast and large that we can't search it all. Some of it is so deep that we haven't even like built things that can withstand the pressure at the bottom of the ocean. And it's pitch black. And every time we go there, we find these bioluminescent. These are things that can kind of make themselves glow. Um, these bioluminescent uh, things, and it's really neat to look at those. And we'll talk about something here in just a moment on that. One reason why the ocean is extremely important is because of the algae. Now, this word right here, algae is a small miniature type of plant. This algae lives in all the ocean. The ocean covers roughly 70% of the earth. What do plants do? They go through photosynthesis, and through that, they make sugars, but a byproduct of that, the waste to them is oxygen. They take in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. Is that kind of good for anybody in this classroom? Yes, that's good for all of us. So again, when we start talking about stop polluting the oceans, there's not just killing the fish. If we start to kill all this algae and all these phytoplankton that live in the ocean, it's going to start affecting the amount of oxygen that's released into the atmosphere, and that's something I think we can all get behind, right? So we'll take a minute to jot some of that so to quickly summarize before I keep moving on, the marine biome is our largest biome. It has salt water, which has salt in it. And I even put duh in uh, brackets over here because um, that's a very easy definition. You shouldn't miss that one. It's the most biodiverse. What does that mean? Bio means life. It means it has the most different types of life in it. We said that it has a million plus plants and animals, and scientists think there's about nine million more we haven't discovered yet. And then marine algae is something that's all in all the ocean, and we know that when plants go through, photo, through photosynthesis, they give us oxygen, which is important. Now, I can't describe to you, Mackie, how excited I was when I was kind of briefing myself through these slides, and I got to this because it reminded me that um, we get to watch a Nature Boom Time video today, which is probably one of my most favorite times of the entire year that I teach. Uh, I, think they, I think they have some of the best videos on YouTube, personally. Um, and they talk about kelp. Now, kelp shows up every once in a while in questions, so I thought we better at least talk about what kelp is. Kelp is a type of marine algae. It has a vast amount of reasons why it's important. Number one, it's a habitat to many different types of animals. Now, I should be able to start using these words that are already vocabulary words, right, Judah? A habitat means it's a home to different animals. It's, it's used in a lot of different things that we, we have, um, including toothpaste and ice cream. 
Yeah, I see some faces in here. I'm probably going to be bringing in some of that uh, dried seaweed and kelp this week to eat during lunch because I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and no one else in my house likes it. They think I'm gross for eating it, which is awesome because it means I can have as much of it as I want and nobody eats my stuff. Kelp also has another like major niche that it fills. As the waves come rolling into the beach in California, this these these things are huge, and you'll see in the video in a minute. They actually take away some of the power of the waves, and if you take away some of the power of the waves, it does less erosion on the beach. So kelp has another thing that's extremely important. Another important marine plant is phytoplankton. You hear me talk about this a lot. Phytoplankton. These are teeny tiny plants, not not these huge kelp. Phytoplankton are teeny tiny plants that serve as the food source because obviously herbivores eat the primary, like the first thing that like makes energy, right? They eat the producers. So some of the teeniest, tiniest fish and even some giant whales feed off of plankton. So there's like billions and billions of these tiny phytoplankton. Um, some scientists estimate that, listen to this, is an insane fact. Phytoplankton, those teeny tiny little plants in the ocean, provide Earth with almost half of the oxygen we have. Phytoplankton provides Earth with half of the oxygen we have. So when I say that phytoplankton is important, I'm not overstating that. Half of Earth's oxygen comes from the oceans and those teeny tiny little plants filling that niche that they have to fulfill. If you happen to be at home, and even if you're not at home and you want to go back and watch this video here, like I could watch this. I've seen it I don't know how many times, and it still blows my mind every time I watch it. And it's I get I get super excited. I'm really excited to watch this today. It's one of my favorite YouTube channels of all. Coming back to this though, the Earth's oceans are home to most of the planet's biodiversity. We've already mentioned that more than once. We can find mollusks, fish, whales, crustaceans, bacteria, fungi, sea anemones, clownfish, and many other animals. Animals have to deal with a very unique living situation in the different parts of the ocean, whether if they're at the deep and there's like no light. Like, you would have to overcome that fact. You'd have to be able to, like, maybe bioluminescent or see in the dark or not need to see at all. Um, you have to handle the amount of salt that lives in, in the ocean. Like, I could not live in the ocean. Number one, I can't breathe underwater. And number two, like, salt water is not my friend. I have not adapted to live in salt water. But the animals have special adaptations. And if you haven't caught on at this point, Sadie, do you hear all these words that I'm saying? It's literally what we spent the first four weeks learning, right? Because I have to be able to just to speak like this because that's the way it just shows up in all the notes and all the videos that we watch. Ocean saltiness. Ocean water is very salty. Remember that one cup per gallon? You could say, you could ask these types of questions. What would make the ocean more salty? And that would be evaporating water. Or if there's ice forming, like if the ocean water starts to freeze, well, that's taking some of the salt out of the ocean, or some of the water out of the ocean, making the uh, ocean more salty. What would make the ocean less salty? Well, if you happen to be in that estuary area we've talked about, river water. If the sea ice starts to melt, something we hear about on the news now, right? Sea ice melting. Um, that doesn't just affect the polar bears and stuff in their habitat. Like It starts to put fresh water back into the ocean. Well, if you add fresh water, it would obviously make the water less salty. Rain, snow. I mean, if it rains, you're putting fresh water in the ocean. If it snows, you're putting fresh water in the ocean. It's going to make the ocean less salty. We'll come back to this, though. We need to get to that later on. And I'm going to stop right there for today for the kids at home. All right, don't forget, smash the like button and subscribe, and that is Ocean Biomes.